I'm going to start this out with some 21 questions or so with Dej Minus. Dej Minus is the first Bermudian to run a four sub mile at a time of 3 minutes, 59 seconds and 35 hundredths of a second. Let's get to know the man behind the mile. All right, so the first question is, what's a song that you can sing word for word? Word for word, mm -hmm. song, probably J. Cole, Love Yours. I, I don't have to sing it, do I? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to throw out a rhyme or two, I don't mind. I can't really sing, but I can sing that song word for word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, describe to me your dream date. My dream date? Oh, boy. Um, Jesus, this might get me in trouble. My dream date. <laughs> Probably not in Bermuda, unfortunately, but somewhere like maybe Greece, one of them places. Um. I'm gonna wake up kinda early, like right now, get a nice good breakfast. Um and then spend the whole day probably out in like the Mediterranean Sea on like a private boat, just like some champagne, <laughs> um, some good food, some good company. And y'all just chill out there all day and then nighttime comes, probably hit up like a nightclub or something. Oh wait, that sounds like a nice thing. <laughs> We've got it locked in. <laughs> All right, what's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I've ever received, probably from my daddy. And it's like, he used to tell me like, when you're a fisherman, like not every day you catch something, but every day like, it was pretty much like just keep showing up. Like, he used to tell me like, you know, people that fish, not every day go out there and catch something, but that don't mean that they're not a fisherman. So you keep showing up. And the other one is probably like, stick to the wicket and the runs will come. And like, I use those two like daily. So like, I stick to the wicket and then the runs will come. Sweet. Love that. All right, um, what's your favorite running memory? My favorite running memory? Probably when I was in university, we, um, it was like the four by 800 and we had like a rival school and probably like, in the, early in the day, it was like a few back and forth, like a little banter. Guys were talking smack, I was talking smack. Um, and then the football 800 came, and it was just like this epic race where like it came down to the very last couple of meters, and we ended up winning, and like it was all intense, and like hoopla hoopla, and like, that's probably like my, my like best memory, because like the people I shared it with was like my teammates like for like four or five years, so it was like a real, something I always remember. That's wicked. Those are always the good ones. Yeah, like, it's, school memories. Yeah, like there was a big rival. Like they used to talk smack. I used to talk smack. I said some things probably in the day earlier <laughs> that I shouldn't have said, but I was I was young. What <laughs> schools are this? Um, so this is, I went to Franklin Pierce University, and the rival school that like that we had at the time was a school called Stonehill. Ooh. And like, and they were good kids. Like we were young, but when we raced, like, I did not like them. So. <laughs> Competitive. Yeah, it was all heated up that one moment. And I was like, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, what's your most embarrassing middle school memory? Embarrassing middle school memory. I don't know. I was pretty I'm pretty boring, I guess. I didn't embarrassing middle school memory. I clear water. I don't, <laughs> Damn. I, don't, I don't think I had any like embarrassing moments like that. Yeah. No, done. Done. I just can't believe that. <laughs> I have way too many embarrassing school I'm memories. I'm sure someone, someone else might think of, think of something, but I, I can't. Off the top of my head, I, don't, I can't remember. I'm going to just think of it some more. We're going to unlock that one later. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit? Um, pretty generic. Grapes. Grapes? Yeah, I, grapes. Just, they're just so like frozen grapes, actually. Put them in the freezer, especially summertime. I just summer that the yeah, other day. Yeah, put them in the boom. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, grapes. Red or green? Both, but I favor green. <laughs> Same. Uh, what meal do you normally eat before you race? Honestly, surprisingly, I don't really have a set meal. Um, Cause like, I, I would usually eat like some type of pasta or rice the night before. Uh, most of the time, it's not a big deal because a lot of my races in the afternoon, evening. So like the dinner the night before is not like a whole like serious issue or uh, definitely like some type of pasta chicken veggies or rice or something like that all right cool if you're stranded on an island what book would you read every day if i was stranded on an island, what book would i read every day this is so boring 
but it's this book. It's called Once a Runner. Once a Runner. Yeah, and it's like my favorite book by far. Um, and I'll read that every day. It's just like a story of this guy. It just goes like it's so, it's so relatable, especially right now. Uh, he's like finished college, and like he's just trying to race, and there's just so many different like life lessons and stuff like that. So probably once a runner. So relatable. <laughs> okay, what are you most proud of in life? What am I most proud about in life? Um, I'd just say like the constant like growth as like not even just a runner but like as a person. You know, I think getting old and all looking back and it's how I handle different like situations. Um, you know, I'm twenty seven, getting up there. Um but I'll just say the thing I'm proud about is just like I guess like the person and man that I'm like working towards and I can see and I can see the progress. So that's that's the thing I'm most proud about. That's sweet. Okay, so what series are you currently binge watching or would you binge watch again? So I haven't been binge watching it, but Kaleidoscope. I've heard about where that. It's like, it's like about the, this heist and each episode is like a different time, different time leading up to the heist or after the heist. Um, the other one I just finished binging was Breaking Bad. <laughs> I've literally never seen Breaking Bad, but I hear about it far too often. And then the Kaleidoscope one, I heard that every person who watches it, like it starts at a different episode for yeah. everybody. That's yeah, kind of so, cool. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I saw on like, I saw on TikTok, you could, um, some guy actually figured out the way to like watch it as if like- The best order. The best order. But I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep just going the, the route that I'm on. The other one is, um, if you ever watch Peaky Blinders. No, never Peaky Blinders is good and Ted Lasso. Have you watched Ted Lasso? No. Oh my god, you gotta get on Ted Lasso. It's like, I feel like I'm a pretty good serious person, yeah, so. Ted Lasso is good. Ted Lasso is good. Probably like that's probably like my favorite series recently is Ted Lasso, Peaky Blinders, and Breaking Bad. Ted Lasso, Peaky Blinders, Breaking Bad. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna have to watch these. <laughs> okay. Um, who inspires you the most? Inspires me the most. Probably my parents, both my mama and my daddy. Um, I think I was very fortunate how they raised, how they raised us, um, and just, I think I learned a lot, like, especially by both of them's the work ethic, uh, I think I learned that a lot from my parents, and just, like, remaining humble, um, and just keeping things in perspective, so I'll say my parents are my biggest, like, influences, and, like, stuff like that. That's awesome. Who would you say impresses you the most? Impresses me the most? <laughs> I don't know, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm like, not easily impressed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, That's cool. Because, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person where, like, things you should just do. Mm. You know what I mean? So I live by, like, you ever heard the saying, like, you don't praise a fish for swimming? Like, that's what they do, right? Like, so if someone does something, like, I'm not like, okay, that's what he or she was supposed to do. Um, I'll say the most impressed They don't have by, to be alive. They, they could be dead and they don't have to be local either. But just someone that you're mainly impressed by. Oh, well, then in that in that sense, I looked up I look up to a lot of like um, like social like revolutionary type people. Mm. Uh, so definitely like you know your Martin Luther Kings, Malcolm X's. Um, I don't want to get in too much trouble, but like Che Guevara mm. and people, people people like that. I get that people are doing things. Yeah. Someone um, said this to me recently: it's people who are hidden above their weight class. Yeah, and even like guys like um, Fred Hampton. You know, pop yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like those, those, those types of people. What's a goal that you want to reach? A goal that I want to reach. So, again, I, I would say I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty goal. I don't know, it's a tough one actually because when I was like growing, when I was younger, like late teens, early twenties, I was so goal orientated. Mm. And then, when, right around 2020, before COVID came, I like started like not having goals for some reason like i know that doesn't make any sense because it's like well how can you be you know this good of an athlete and like reach high levels without any goals but it's like i generally don't have any oh, i'll watch y'all back um there's things i want to accomplish like you obviously you, know, you obviously want to go to the olympics go to like world championships but at the same time like my biggest goal is just like continue to improve like and just falling in, like, falling in love with, like, the process and progress. So, like, yeah. I don't know, it doesn't really answer your question. Because, no, like... It does. 
I just, yeah. <laughs> I just, that, that sounds so bad to say I don't have girls because like I do have girls, but I just don't. I just don't place an emphasis on it because when I when I had all these girls, I was have a person where I'll write all these girls down like do this, do that, do this, do that, and I would just like live and die by those girls. Where like oh, if I didn't accomplish that goal, I would like put my head down. Like I feel not worthless, mm. but I feel like oh I didn't amount to anything. And I got rid of that, and now I'm just like you know just keep showing up every day. And those girls I do have in the back of my head, like the Olympics, the world championships, you. like running, running fast times. Like if I keep doing the right things, then those girls are inevitable. Damn, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> so after you complete a race, what's the first thing that you do? After I complete a race? Oh, uh, so it kind of depends on how, on how the race goes. <clears throat> um, if it's a bad, I'll start off with something bad. Um, if it's a bad race, I tend to just like, just I need to be by myself, um, just because like, I've I've had races where they've gone bad and like, someone said something to me and I've like, short fuse said the wrong like, just reacted negatively back. Um, where now, if I have a bad race, just just like leave me alone. Like just give me my coach is like you know give me like a thirty minute rule. Like you got thirty minutes to like, mope and be upset about it. But then once those thirty minutes are over, that race is done. Can't do anything about it. Just, all right, like it's done. Um, move on to the next. And after a good race, um, probably reach out to my family. You know, it's, it's funny, like usually the first person that texts me after any race, if my coach isn't there, is my sister. Uh, so I'll like turn on my phone and the first message will be a message from my sister. Like if it's bad, she's always got like some, some words of motivation. And if it's good, she's just like proud of you. Um, so definitely check my phone. And then depending on where I am, Go find like a nice restaurant somewhere. <laughs> get some, <laughs> get some, some food, some drinks, and celebratory then celebratory meal. So, yeah, a little celebratory meal. And then when I'm, when I'm traveling, I usually leave like the very next day. So try to go back to the hotel, tidy up, and then I get ready to leave. Awesome. Yeah, Tease is definitely a good motivator. <laughs> but I'm telling you, when she put on our hockey sticks, like she had this idea herself, like gonna just put a little thing on you guys, hockey sticks that you know help to motivate you guys. And I got mine back, and it was like just the letters of my best friend who recently passed. Like, I'm yeah. telling you, I cried. I yeah, was yeah. like bawling, but it definitely encouraged me to yeah. score. <laughs> so definitely love teeth. Okay. What's the worst advice that you have ever received? <laughs> the worst of it's just anything? Anything. In life, in sports, whatever, anything. In relationships. <laughs> <laughs> the worst advice I've ever received. I... I guess I'll say I've been lucky not to receive any like crazy advice to be like, uh, definitely don't do that. But it's probably been the if I don't know the exact advice, but it's probably been like someone in running that like just telling me to do something that I'm like not like, oh you should do this or like like I'll bump into people in the road and for some reason they just feel like they need to tell me how I should train or like how I should race. And I'm just there sitting listening to this like and like I know that they mean well, but I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything that you're telling me. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're telling me, oh, you should do this and train it. And I'm like, I appreciate your words, but like, I don't want to do that. What you're saying don't make no sense to me. Yeah, you'll listen, but you yeah. probably won't hate the exactly. advice. But you know, yeah. thank you, thank you for coming up and talking <laughs> <Yeah>. to me. <laughs> okay, what's a question that most journalists always ask you? <laughs> so, probably like before race, and like, yeah, I know, and journalists, I used to want to be. A journalist, right? I, I, before I, when I was in school, I was like, I want to study like mass communications and be like a sport journalist. I looked up to like um, <laughs> um, Stephen A. Smith and all those guys on ESPN, yeah. Stu Scott. Um, but the question that annoys me the most is like, like two days before a race, and it's like, what's your plans for the race? And I'm just like, to win. Like that's a dumb, <laughs> like that's the dumbest question. But it's like, yeah, bro, like the race is coming, like. How, how you feeling? Like, I feel good. Like, I don't know what to say. What's your plans? Oh, I want to win. And it's just like, the conversation just goes dry because it's just like, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, the race is coming, I want to win. Like, <laughs> that's what that's it. it. <laughs> I know, that's definitely the first two yeah. generic, like, questions. And, that and I don't know what else, with. I honestly, probably as a journalist, I don't know what else you're supposed to ask. Like, oh, how's your mom? How's your dad? No. Like, <laughs> you can ask like unconventional questions, yeah. so, like things that you probably wouldn't expect. Yeah. Obviously, that's what you want to get out of you because you want to have that good content. Anyway, that's a whole other route. But what's the most beautiful place you've ever ran? 
Ooh. Ooh, that's a that's a good one because I, I run in a lot of nice places. Um first probably just here in Bermuda. Um I think it's very under we under under yeah, we undervalue what we have here. But outside of Bermuda. So it's different, it's different. Like I run in like a city and like the city atmosphere and like landscape was definitely beautiful. But then like probably like the dirt roads of like New England, like in the fall, the trees are like changing color, oh, like the yeah, leaves are falling, pretty. like people you run across someone's house, there's like pumpkins out there. Um, so yeah, it's probably like rural New England's probably the like most beautiful place I've ever run. Oh, sweet. Okay. Okay, what songs are like your pre-race pump-up songs? Um, so I listen, listen to, my, 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 my music range is like, whew, way over the place. Um, so I listen to like a lot of, recently before race, I listened to a lot of UK drill. Um, and then probably listen to some like weird, like slow, slow music. I don't even know the artist, but like, just like some calm me down. But usually it's just like some UK drill. Um, um listen to a lot of little dark G Herbo and just a lot of U US, UK drill. Slow music, would that be instrumental or is it actually someone singing something? Slow, like slow, like yeah. I'll just go on Apple and just be like soothing slow. music. Okay. And just like <laughs> and just shuffle listen, it and yeah. just listen to that. What does a daily schedule look like for you as a teacher and a wanna? So I'm no longer so I'm no longer working in the school. Oh. I'm strictly just running. But I guess we can go back to early twenty twenty two and I was a paraeducator. Um I was working at Sands. So I was leaving here, Bay. <laughs> and making 8.30 sands and then but that was brutal because I was waking up like 5.15, 5.30 doing my morning run spending the day at school then coming back riding straight down the road training at 4 o'clock either, either down here at the stadium Arboretum Botanical Gardens um, and getting in to do at 6.30 and at that point in time I was like a real I didn't enjoy it because like my social life was going and I was like in bed by 9 o'clock Cause like I was just like had to do my run in the morning, then ride up to Somerset, come home, train. Like I was just like boom, boom, boom. And it wasn't the thing about it is like I learned a lot about myself in those two years where I was working up there, but it just wasn't what I what I wanted to do or needed to do. Like I wasn't giving my all in my running, and I also wasn't giving my all like working at the school because like some days I would just be exhausted from training, and I'll go to the school and be like not barely surviving, but like I just wasn't able to give my all, especially yeah. in the the, the situation that I was working in, I was with an individual student and like, it was a lot some days. And the other thing was like, I was coming, I was coming finishing school and not being able to train. Like if my coach had 10 reps, I was only doing six or seven just because like, I was physically and mentally out of it. And like, I survived and I made progressions, but like, I, I, had, to, I had to put that to the side yeah. for right now. Cause you know, like, especially when it comes to athletics and being an athlete, like focusing on that one thing and just being able to do that one thing Obviously, yeah. you're going to get better in it if you're not yeah. having no other distractions and focuses. Yeah. But what, now I have to ask, like, what is it like now just being strictly so this, now, is, this is So <laughs> now, it's very boring. Um, <laughs> so, like, for example, because, like, so I train every day. Uh, most of the time, we train, like, twice a day. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be, like, a morning. So if on an easy day, it'll be two runs that are easy. Um, and those, we go on minutes. So, like, we'll run 30 minutes in the morning, 60 minutes at night. And during the day, it's just nothing. It's just, like, resting sleeping, trying to like recover. And then it's like, if it's a hard day, I'll have like my workout in the morning, gym in the afternoon and another run in the evening. So it's pretty much just run, sleep, run, recover, try to stay off my feet, watch a lot of Netflix, listen to podcasts. Um, and then like, I do a lot of like, because, I, because I'm not, because I'm just running, I try to like, like learn more things, you know what I mean? So I, listen, I watch a lot of like different documentaries and like podcasts and stuff like that just to like stay stay up on things so i'm not just strictly just just being a runner you know what i mean like yeah, i want to yeah. just keep diversifying myself sweet but that's really interesting so what is it oh my god there's a question i was just now in my head and it just went away come back come back i hate it when that happens <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll come back to me all right so what's your most memorable teaching moment there then i get asked um, so yeah, my, my situation when I was at Sands was I was, I was you know, pretty much one-on-one -on -one with, with a student. Um, and I, I guess, you know, we, had, we, had, we, had a, we shared a, a unique bond. Um, and I just remember one day when I was working with this student, he just told me, like, he's thankful that I'm, like, in his corner. And, like, that just really, like, 
that really made me feel like fulfilled a bit. So like that would probably be my most memorable, memorable moment working in the school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be a good feeling. So now you're making a difference in someone's life. Definitely. So what type of running shoes do you wear? <laughs> um, so I'm pretty much, it's weird. So I do all my training in Adidas, but I'll race in Nike. <laughs> <laughs> Only because like, the way my, I don't know, for some reason the Adidas spikes and my foot placement, my foot just feels all over the place, but the Nike, the Nike spike is more like snug to my foot. So yeah, I do this for regular training and Nike for my racing. All right. Do you have any like weird superstitions? My word of superstition is probably that I can't race without my retainer in. You wear a retainer? Yeah, I wear a retainer. I, so the thing is, I wouldn't wear it enough, but it's like the night before a race, I have to put it in, I have to sleep in it. And the day of the race, I have to have it in before I run. If I go to start in line without my retainer in, it's wraps. Like I, I just know for a fact, I'm not going to have a How long race. have you had this retainer? since I stopped wearing my braces in high school. It's the same retainer? It's, no, no, different oh. retainer, different retainer, different okay. retainer. No, no, no. I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. was like, could you not yeah. go without that no, same no, retainer? Different, different retainer, but it's like, it's like, it's almost like a mental, like when I put the retainer in on the way to the race, mm. my mind kind of like just turns on. And that's like the weirdest thing that I do. <laughs> I mean, I do a few other weird things, but that the retainer <laughs> is by far like, yeah, it's up there. It's up there. <laughs> Okay, so what does Dej Minus' life look like 10 years from now? 10 years from now? I don't even know what tomorrow is going to look like. <laughs> um, Running probably. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll definitely <laughs> run tomorrow. 10 years from now, what my life would like to look like? I mean, hopefully I've done everything that I wanted in terms of running. And this, this is going to get a little emotional and deep, but like I'll, 10 years from now, I'll be 37. I hope to be like a father or a husband. Um, you know, having a nice, nice life, like taking care of my children, um, and just trying to teach them lessons, really. If that makes, if that, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, I don't really know. That's a good goal to yeah. have. 